Hello, um, this will be a presentation of my painting Electric Hues, which uh, falls into the sci-fi genre. And um, on a side note, on a side note, I'm a I'm a big, huge fantasy fan. And uh, but sci-fi with this uh, with this worn look and more in in line with Star Wars and Blade Runner, not as much as Star Trek, for example, with the clean, cleaner looking environments is, is something that I also admire a lot. And in, in this process, I, I, I remember it was, I started to, it, it was an attempt to, to play more around with photos and to try and come up with a um, a more productive uh, way of applying photos and blending them into the the painting and I did a lot of use of the match color um, uh, adjustment filter and you will see this especially in the video but now analyzing about uh, analyzing the the painting um, you can see it's a street scene and the, the name, the title of the painting is very much in line with it. So you've got these electric hues. It's, it's all these different hues that are in, present in this market scene, but they have this neon vibe, so uh, you immediately sense that this is artificial light because of all the different uh, hues in them, and, and it makes for um, an also a very interesting area here in the middle, the, the, that the human eye is drawn to almost as if each of these stalls had a different light, and there is not much regard for harmony. It's it's very, it's a very um, very div diversified light, and although there is this blue overall feeling all these warm hues, warm and some of them are, are colder, these greens and these magentas, um, they, they spice up the, the whole image and, and make it um, more interesting. There's this strong sense of perspective uh, from this road, to, I've got this line, so it all leads into this area, but it's not, you can't see the end of the street here. Actually, looking here at the back, you see that if, if this was a plan view, more or less, uh, imagine this being the stalls and the camera is looking here, so it's going there, but then there's this plane, it goes there Probably there are some things happening here that you can't see. Let me copy this into a separate layer. And then there are these bridges there on top. So it's something very medieval looking, medieval looking, uh, where there's no, no plan it's very the this city evolved naturally organically as the needs arose so you have these stalls these structures these buildings you probably you have these you have these buildings here and you can imagine them here but these stalls they evolved they they grew sorry they grew around these buildings and something that you could see in in slums and things like that there's a pre-existing pre structure but um, humans found a way to to build around it with whichever means they have uh, and then also now that we're talking about the types of buildings then they're in the back uh, you can see these very tall structures in the back. You you can't see the structures. You see their silhouettes, but 
these tall silhouettes with these straight lines, you immediately assume, and being this this being a city, you immediately assume that these are man-made man -made structures and not natural elements. So you have this um, high-tech uh, city in the back and very modern looking, and then these um, I don't know mid mid height residential buildings, and then you have in the foreground where the viewer is, you have this these stalls and these more local human sized uh, market. So it's a very interesting. Uh, I'm bringing about my own painting, so it's I don't know it's it's an interesting way to 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 delve. It's a human scale here. Uh, it rises, and then in the back, very far in the back, you have this big city waiting for us. Uh, in terms of um, in terms of hues, as I said before, you have you have this. Uh, let's say. This area, and let's put it like this. Oops. With this blue, and then you have this area where you can. We have all these colors and mixed with blues. This transitional area of these canopies, orange is here, darks. So it's more or less this is what you read. Although you look at this, no, it's got nothing to do with it. Yeah, but it's analytically this is more or less the read of the colors in the painting. Um, then in terms of, of detail distribution, you have, this is, there are these two clear focal points here and here, here especially because of the human figure, and I think he's the only one, yeah, this, there's a sil, no sorry, there are these, but they are so blended with, the, with what is behind them, you can actually, uh, uh, see what is what it is. On a side note, I'm not the greatest speaker, so sometimes my my voice, as I'm thinking about these things, my voice ge gets a bit boring and and very low. So <laughs> I hope you don't fall asleep while I'm saying this, and that you find interesting what I'm and what I'm telling you. And I'm also, me, I, I'm also finding out things by myself um, for the first time as I'm doing this, this uh, dissection, disse as I'm dissecting the, the painting and I'm finding out things that I didn't even think about at the time. So in terms of uh, detailed dis distribution, you have these characters here, these small islands, everything, there is a very strong contrast between this detailed area and the uh, swooping, these tents, these cloths uh, above them. Again, these details. And then the road, it doesn't have that much detail. It's more a textural quality. And the detail is focused here where the light is, is hitting this wet street. Here it's mostly defined by silhouettes. You have this totem, this pole with these um, digital displays. And again here a very 
subdued um, texture of the of the, the the facade of these buildings. But overall, the detail is really concentrated along this uh, strip. And then you have these small points of light, and there it's mostly it's um, mostly they are. It's uh, sorry here. Let's do uh, an orange. It's this overall glow with um, with a strong color dodge. You have these distributed, and you can put them anywhere. But these small pools of light, and sometimes, or most of them, are cut off by something that is in front of them. Or here, rope, or something hanging but this is something that is repeated throughout this whole painting even these lights on the ground have some boxes in front of them or some small sticks and it all makes this image uh, more interesting with the, all these small details and <clears throat> and more let me see well this is more there there is again i put this in most of my all almost all of my paintings this haze layer is also reminds us of a rainy day indeed there are two aspects here that that tell us that it has been raining or it's it's about to it's a very humid um, setting and you have this wet road you can't actually see the water but you see the reflections of these artificial lights reflected on the ground which um, which always looks very very cool it always works uh, just putting in some reflections on the ground and then you have this haze layer in the back again an indication of the humidity that is in the air or it's about to rain or it has rained and there is a lot of humidity coming up from the from the streets and um, yeah i think i will go over the, the step by step process now and then the photoshop file analyzing the layers i, I forgot to mention mention something and I think it's it's worth talking about um, is the language of these these canopies opposed to the structure of the of the buildings in the back. You can see that these buildings are made up of mostly straight lines. Here the bridge, verticals, even the on the facade, the windows and the terraces, they all follow that perspective. But it's mostly straight lines. And then almost like a barrier or telling us you're entering a different section, you have these let's put them in a different color. You have these arches. Even this, although there might be a a structure underneath them that is made up of straight lines the um, readability is of, of waves almost you have these swooping motions and you can see it's opposed even these uh, tran transitionary transitory <laughs> I don't know uh, that make the transition these structures also have this um, 
more traditional look to them. And it clearly separates this. And even then, these buildings have straight lines, but they are not, they are not large, um, not la uh, long uh, straight lines. They are broken up. And then in the end, very summarized, you have these, these lines, almost only this. So it's different realities. You have the modern buildings, you have the medium uh, modern buildings that are are um, are both uh, modern, but you can see they are broken up, they're used, and it's a more of a human scale. And then then you have this traditional look in the lower part, where above the um, above the market. It almost looks like oriental roofs, but they're much more uh, organic and um, irregular. And then here in the market, and you could even say that the market is composed of smaller shapes, very small rectangles and curves and uh, small straights here and there, all these small objects. And overall, this is how you can read the shapes, the interplay of these shapes um, in, in this painting. Okay, that, that's what I wanted to say about these shapes. Taking a look at the step-by-step -step JPEGs, Something that, as I open the first file, you will immediately see the difference between the last one. It's, it's that the, um, sorry, you can't see it here, but at that uh, ultimately I ended up um, mirroring the the whole image because uh, it ended up making more sense placing the. The perspective towards the right instead of the left. As, it, as you can see, I started the, the painting with a black and white sketch. I used the circular round brush, so no texture, no square brush, just circular, and played already with uh, the darkest and the lightest. It's not a medium contrast image, so all the um, main contrasts are already defined here. So you see a hazy background with some structures in the back. You have this that will be ultimately the totem. You have this market area and here the, the focus is concentrated along this part. Then here there's the application of color. You see the sky here was quite bright in the beginning but it's already revolving about blues with um, purples. And then there are some splashes of color here and here, but in the end I made this much more apparent. This is a, a basic, a rough, um, a rough sketch, a rough guideline of what was to be. And I think I played more with natural light coming in above these tents and hitting this area on the left. But this is something that changed throughout the painting. In in this case, the the painting it's it really evolved from this photo that I applied and then painted over it and adapted it. But this was so I had this um, these main this this rough structure. But as I applied this photo and started to paint, the the painting evolved from this island outwards. <clears throat> and this was very important. It was a, a great photo I, I found of one of the um, the photo packs that are online available, and it was a uh, from a Chinese street, Chinese market, and it, it, it fit perfectly. Even the 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 vendor looking in that direction, so everything fit very nicely. And from there, things start to adapt. Here, 
it's an overall uh, adjustment of values and hues so it, everything looks more bluish instead of this this um, these beige these oranges very washed oranges everything looks more blue which in turn also contrasts nicely with these warm uh, lights coming from the stalls and here you see I closed this area I applied um, a photo texture of a building and these buildings that were here got shifted to the left and they all were also stretched here I applied this was painted um, of these display displays but then this market this part of the market is beginning to get much more importance and, and referencing some of the colors from the other side so these blues and also these magentas coming from here and then um, here much more detailed applied the this facade is also pushed backwards by applying a bluish haze layer and also these structures because here there was a very abrupt cut from this canopy to the to this facade and here I introduced this transitory shape to make the transition between the the facade made up of straight vertical lines and these curvy lines of the market tents and then finally uh, the blues were desaturated a little they were a bit too strong uh, applied some more detail but then overall this was the 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 pass to introduce these glows these halos around the light sources and as I had um, shown before, putting cutting, putting some objects in front of these hazes, which always works very well. Also here, here glows. Here, here I didn't do that much. It was more around this area, the the focal area, one of these one of the focal areas of the of the painting. And now going to the Photoshop file. So here's the the flipped version um, that I ultimately ended up going with. And taking a look at the Photoshop file, I since I did this um, this is the final file, but there are a lot of layers that don't show up in this file because they were mer they were merged um, during the the process because I did a lot of work with with uh, three basic layers in the beginning of foreground midground and background and to keep things simple I merged them along the way but uh, you will you will get uh, to take a look in the video process you will see the um, how I work with the layers here inside the Photoshop file, you can see there is a. Um, I did this this diagram to more or less uh, establish the focal points. So you have this area, uh, this road, the street where it gets inside the market. This small gate, let's call it like that, and this vendor here on the left. and I'm going to turn off these layers first going here to the sketch so starting with very broad brush strokes painting in the sky already making use of gradients and then here reducing the the brush size and starting to paint in these these reds are because I was overlaying this uh, diagram and accidentally I probably picked up some reds and they ended up there but they, they have no meaning so you can see as I 
as I'm sculpting around this, these shapes, things get defined here. I don't have a clear idea of what I want this painting to be. It's something that evolves. Then here I'm overlay, overlaying. Um, and very important is this small detail here. Is that I'm if I I'm overlaying the blue only in the brighter areas of the painting. If I push this down, and now I'm putting going to put it off screen. But as I turn it on and off. You can see here the shadowy areas have much less blue in them, which makes sense because shadowy areas have a less saturation of color, and here they are bluish, more bluish. And I'm just going to undo it. So um, it's and it's something that I very often forget to do. Uh, I apply an overlay layer. Uh, I apply a layer in overlay mode with a color, and the shadows have two strong colors in them. And it's something that shows up in the latter stages then of the painting. And then sometimes I end up applying a hue saturation to desaturate the shadowy areas. But if I do this first by creating a new layer in overlay mode, filling it with one color, and then uh, controlling the blend of this this ramp so it does not get applied with values that are lower than this and from here to there it's a transition it's a gradual transition and then here it's fully applied in these areas and my advice is to to learn how to use the to use the blend of and and when whenever you apply an overlay a layer in overlay mode with a color and to do this also. Then I start to apply some because my idea was that the light was going to hit these this part of the market from from the upper right. And then introducing some more variety to color. As you can see the color was at the beginning concentrated here and not here in the shadowy area. Then here the overlay here I didn't use a blend if. Perhaps I should have used it, but it's it's good to have that idea that it's it's common it's um it's good practice to use it. Um, but if you don't, uh, you'll you'll end up um, controlling the the hues and saturations later on. So this was the initial sketch, and then and uh, there is now is a big step, but you can you will see in the video how I went from one step to the other, but I used, um, any, I cut this part out with a lasso selection, a very rough cutout, and the back, and then I painted just with, on the front, and just, I called it the foreground and the background, just painted these areas separately. And as you can see, this looks close to, to the final painting, but there's a lot of work in this step. And I will describe this in the video. Um, and the, the reason to use this is that when whenever I applied things in the back, the shape of the foreground was kept intact. And I, and I didn't have to worry about when I was painting here. The downside is that sometimes it can make things too rigid. And... Uh, the, the layer structure is not so easy to work with like this. So that's why then on top you have the, this pass where I didn't didn't care much about these um, these airbrush strokes and things like that to be applied on top because it also m brings this together so it doesn't look like something was cut and pasted on top and everything blends together. Analyzing this layer group. So again, layer in overlay mode with a large airbrush to control the hues and bring things together. Here it's to brighten up this reflection um, on the wet pavement. Introducing, you can see that 
the the transition from this background to the foreground is not so strong. Here I used the light mode, so this um, this brighter uh, blue was only applied to this transition area. It was not applied to the as you can see, it's only applied to the dark area. Oops, sorry. So it's only lightening. It's, the, the lighten is only applied in the dark areas because I used a color that is slightly lighter than this dark. Here, this was a although it was a short step. Uh, because of the importance of that structure in the back, it was quite important. And this this step, I, I painted in the sky, but immediately these two big towers show up and um, <clears throat> make a lot of sense in the in all the setting. <clears throat> details, smaller details here. Um, putting in some more photo details giving more variety to the canopy. Then I also painted in these circles to give some pattern and bring these together. Layer group uh, basically adjustments. As you can see I desaturated the darker areas and the blues. Here if I take a closer look at this uh, apparently there is nothing being applied but if I go, most probably, if I go to greens, no, science, small, but no, not significant. Here's the biggest change. So I darkened the blues and reduced the saturation. And perhaps of the magentas, no. So this is what happened. I darkened these blues and desaturated them. I don't know if I applied, yeah. If you take a look at the layer mask, you can see that I airbrushed the uh, brushed in with a soft brush the areas that I wanted to be so the white white areas are not being um, affected by this adjustment layer, only the blacks. And you see the strongest is, is here. And then here I think I did something similar. No, I think I only I reduced the um, sometimes I use the hue saturation layer and the lightness, I don't know. I, I like the, the, the effect, but probably with the levels or brightness contrast it's the same uh, effect. But basically it was to to darken these areas here around. So ultimately it's these small adjustments to color and value. Then I introduce these lights. As I showed you before in the beginning, painted in some structures in front of them to make it much more interesting. Overall addition of more details. Again, the same thing. And here are some glows in the end in overlay mode to m really make those glows pop. And then finally the, the flipped version. But now I'm going to place, take a closer look at the at the video so you can see those how I went from this to that. Okay, now talking about the video. You can see I had already set up this grid and this helped me in the first stages of the sketch. I'm going to speed this up. So you can see I'm using broad uh, brush strokes right from the beginning to establish large shapes. This darker shape more in the foreground, this lighter shape in the background and then introducing some smaller uh, some smaller shapes to break up these uh, strong silhouettes. 
I introduced the gradient to introduce um, more values. Here you can see the canopy is, and I'm I'm looking at these focal areas while I'm doing this. And I'm switching between small uh, brush strokes and large brush strokes at the, uh, at the same time. What I want is a, a nice uh, silhouette and shapes uh, while I'm exploring these. And you can see these structures of these markets are, are slowly um, showing up. And they're all following the perspective to that focal area there. I changed the, the grid to red so it became more apparent. Now I'm always, I'm not, there is not a, a perspective grid a guideline uh, under it because I know more or less what I want. I want this to be the vanishing point in all the areas all the lines are supposed to converge to that point but I, I, I'm not taking much care and even being a, a market scene where there are very few parallel lines everything is so organic that it's it's a it's a mixture of all of, of very different um, differently oriented planes so I don't have to take that much care with respect to here Now painting with a smaller brush to define details. Always taking scanning the, the whole painting, the whole canvas. And you can also see I'm painting this uh, at a medium size. Uh, it's not too small, but it's also not too big. So I always have um, um, an overall view of the painting. And sometimes I take a look at the navigator here to see it at thumbnail size and evaluate it. Smaller shapes, skip ahead. Now I'm focusing on, well, no, but the, the structure in the back. The totem appears. Some indication of uh, of lines that go to um, a second vanishing point somewhere there to the right. And once I was uh, all happy with the the black and white uh, sketch, I thought it was time to to start applying color. That's where the the overlay layers came in and the different colors. We already talked about this on the Photoshop file. Here the overlay layer to bring all the colors, shifting all, shift all the colors to this blue. I was still uh, keeping the grid, but now that when I, now that I have the sketch Established. This is the part where I start to separate the elements and the unseen part of the Photoshop file. Lasso selection, very rough. I know that I don't have to take much care with this now. Then I cut in the hole there because I want this to show through. Then I copy and paste it. So this is what I have for the background. I paint in the, the areas that will show behind the foreground. I don't have to paint the whole background. I, I, I cut the sky, but I don't think I... Yeah, probably I separated it now, but then when I, when I went to the detailing part more and towards the end, I merged with the, with the mid-ground. Okay, so I'm going to slow this down. 
So I have the for background, uh, foreground, background, background. This would be the midground and the sky. Called it background because it was these buildings and the foreground. The first thing that I did was to bring in that photo. Let me see. Okay, so this was the photo. It was a part of a photo. Very greenish. It clashes with the other, with the rest. But then, by let me see exactly. I made a um, so I adjusted the size. Then I made a selection of this. I went and selected the foreground layer, which was basically the, the market area, and created a new layer of what was underneath this photo. So let me see if I can go back. So it would be um, a selection, a rectangular selection of this which has all the values and color information that I need to to change the photo to these um, colors. So here adjusting, making the copy. Now that I have the... I'm going to rename it CM color match. Then I invoke the... invoke. And then I... Um, Use the match color adjustment with a shortcut key. Push in a, then I source, I select the the actual painting. I, I had these two paintings, but I it was other paintings that I was doing at the time. But make sure to pick the right painting, the one you're working on. And then in the layers I picked color match. Okay, and it immediately uh, blends in with the surrounding colors. But, uh, as I recall it, I cut out some parts because it didn't blend. It was too bluish also. So you can see I'm cutting out the parts that I want the painting to show through. So it integrates with, um, with the painting. Yeah, that, that, that's it. I actually, I didn't, the, the warm colors that come afterwards were painted in with, with glows and overlays. But this was one of the most important steps of the painting. And you can see that now I'm painting things in front and integrating. Um, I did the same with another photo. So I cut, in here I cut the photo. I think it was from the same photo pack made a selection from the back. Perhaps I even used the same um, color match selection, this same layer. So you can see it immediately um, blends with, um, with the, the underlying, underlying painting. Again, cutting out parts that I wanted to be in front. And as you can see, it starts to evolve organically. Uh, it, you, you you don't see the photo that much anymore because there are parts of painting uh, mixed with the parts of the photo. Again, a photo on the side, lasso selection, color matched it, then painted on top. Same with the ground. Here I had to adjust the perspective so it made sense. Cut out the when I thought I wanted to, to this area to be lit by the sun, but it didn't quite work. I ended up painting over it, but then I did the color match and to blend it together. And as you can see now, I'm painting over the photo areas that are hit by the lights that are now starting to appear in this in these stalls. I'm also zooming in. Oops. 
looks like a big step at the overlay layer uh, with the blue here yeah, I think it's here yeah so it's just applying a new layer filling it with the blue and changing the color mode to overlay and then after having with the layer selected I can adjust the brightness so to see what makes sense and then I paint it I created a new layer on top that was clipped to the underlying layer and painted in the warmer hues so it ends up being an overlay layer filled with blue and some areas with a warm color on top some brighter blues here and then a color balance to even things out on top probably also painted in the layer mask adjusted the shadows the colors of the shadows <clears throat> this is, is all a lot of experimentation and hue saturation also to adjust the blues here desaturate the blues and make them darker Now I'm dealing with the background. And th this part is it's it's a it's a boring part, but if I apply adjustment layers on top of both the foreground and the background layer, and then I want to merge everything so I can in the end keep just the foreground and the background layer without the adjustment layers on top I have to copy them, all the adjustments that I did clip them to the background layer or the foreground layer as you see here and then merge them down and in the end now I'm here I'm merging them down and in the end what I have is again <coughs> three layers but they have been color adjusted but I don't have the adjustment layer so it, it doesn't get cumbersome it's easier to work with the uh, layers like that then painting in more colors here and as you can see now I'm just painting in the back you can see I'm painting without much concern about the silhouette because it's in a top layer and I don't have to worry about things that um, are painted over it then I'm painting again on the foreground layer defining the silhouette keeping all in one layer so it's easier for me to erase parts and paint things in then I'm introducing this facade doing exactly the same thing with um, with a color match of the of the area below a color match and I don't think this one worked so well and I believe I did a second version yeah exactly I applied another photo here I cut the part that I didn't want I don't know if I used the color match here let me check no here I just reduced the opacity or no I better not say anything. No, I, I use the, the color match again. And basically it was just shifting everything to blue because there is a strong haze layer in front and everything it gets very monochromatic, almost like a, a hue saturation with match color applied. Painting in more details, going to speed things up now. Jumping forward. As you can see, it's uh, I'm defining the facade, painting on, on top of it, but keeping most of the details from the photo below it. Now I'm here painting in the displays, the bright color, probably color picking from the from the from the painting that was done 
so the the colors are from the same setting and here I introduced this transitionary shape here instead of the match color I did a color balance which is also a way to although it's you have more control over it but it's uh, it's a little bit more work to make it match the colors of the painting underneath and then I painted in the rest of the details some that I had erased and so it doesn't just look like the photo was pasted in it looks like more like a painted area again some photos in the lower part painting in lights making those lights interact with the shapes in this case the figures Um, giving more detail to the canopies again photos applied when you apply the photos with the color match um, technique it's also important to make the the area that you are applying the photos to to more or less match um, match the photos so the photos should match the area of the painting more or less otherwise it will be difficult for you to to make the the colors match and and you will have to paint a lot on top of it painting 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 uh, all with a small brush again another photo so it's applying a photo cutting out things and then color matching it sometimes uh, the color match is applied and so many things are painted on top that in the end you don't even see the color match and you don't even see the photo that was applied but that's a good thing because you want the, the whole painting to have a painterly look and not like something that was composed just of photos and pasted on top of each other yeah and I think yeah so this this what you saw <clears throat> This is uh, the, this, all the stage that you that you just witnessed, and so it's a lot of uh, color matching and painting on top, and pasting in pasting in photos, sometimes behind the foreground layer, um, and then painting in small details, and again adding more photos, bringing all of this together. And painting on top of it and then in the end when I was satisfied I just I just started to paint over all the layers because I I didn't have need for the for the division of foreground and background anymore so I just kept kept it here but I could have as well I could have merged these two uh, layers together and as you can see as I'm applying these airbrush strokes uh, on top, I'm doing it on a in a zoomed out view, so I can have a a feeling of the overall effect that uh, painting the painting of those areas has. Uh, I'm continuing to to apply the the color match um, objects, photo overlays, painting in some details here and there. Here you can see I will now draw the, the circles just to give it some repetition, some pattern. The figure I gave it a mask, it didn't have a mask. I painted in the back from the light. I painted the light hitting the back from this light. Also as if it was carrying a mobile phone or display. So the photos that you um, that you apply in your painting, it's it's important to make them interact with the lights already in the scene. Here, the the lights and the the objects painted on front in front. Now it's really just a matter of taking a look at all the painting and going through areas that. 
that need more detail. And this being a market scene that is full of small objects and boxes and wires and it's it's great to add a lot of detail but it can be it can be a bit uh, there, there's a lot of work involved sometimes and uh, because it's all those small details and you repeat 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 but in the end it just makes the, the image uh, much more interesting if you don't give up and keep adding details over all the image as you can see here, and, and this this part is not that interesting, so I'm skipping it forward. And you can see, as I did here, uh, these small details of the light of the screens hitting these, I don't know, these sticks or this canopy. It's important to make this to make the whole painting believable. Yeah, I think. I think that's it. And in the end, yeah, I flipped it. Oops, sorry. Take it here. So that was was a big decision, but it it made much more sense. Well, I hope you you took a you have a good idea of how this painting created was created, even though. There is a lot of information that's only recorded in the video and that's not apparent in the Photoshop file and the the step by step process but again it's it's something that is important um I don't like to work that much in, the, in this way because I don't keep to get I, I don't I don't keep the layers of all the process but um, it's a great way to to work and keep things organized, all and to separate the the layers and give more depth to the image. Okay, thank you for listening.